Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to make this Christmas tree. I got two. I've got a little tiny one. So um, what I used for this was just four weight. I didn't use anything worsted, but um, for the one I'm going to make today, I'm going to use worsted and it's a completely different color as you can see. So you can make them any color you want. Uh, for the bigger one, I used, um, because, and especially because I'm using the worsted, uh, I'm going to use a 5 millimeter hook, and you will also need some glitter glue if you wanted to do snow. I just bought this at the dollar store. It's Elmer's Glitter Glue, and that is, I don't know if you can see, I put little balls on my tree here let me get the smaller one it's all got color so all these little colored balls that's the glitter glue that's how I did that so I mean if you don't have that well I mean you can just run to the dollar store but if you don't have it then I I didn't make balls so um, there won't be any any balls to make but I got you can get all these different colors silver there's probably a crap ton more so but that's what I got there and then the um, uh, size of the hooks are going to change too because to make the little bows that I made I'm pretty sure I used a 3.5 um, let me see yeah I used a 3.5 so that's for all the the bows on it that I did Still a four weight, a really tight bows, but uh, I used a 3.5 millimeter, so let's get started. All right, so let's start, I got my five millimeter H hook. Let's start with a magic ring. So I want you to put another chain in there and I want you to put eight half double crochets. So you should have nine all together. Uh, because of our chain two at the beginning. So we're not slip stitching or chaining two or anything. We're gonna we're gonna do this in a spiral because we're gonna use that particular spiral later. We're starting at the point and working down. So your next round is just gonna be one half double crochet in each stitch. Two. That is number nine. Should have had nine stitches. <clears throat> Next round is going to be one half double crochet and an increase. So put in your first half double, and we're going to use a stitch marker now. And then your next stitch gets the increase of two half doubles in the same space. And repeat. One half double. 
Max stitch gets two half doubles. <coughs> Excuse me. Max stitch gets one. Max stitch gets two. Oops. And the last stitch gets two. So now you're just going to do one half double crochets in each. You should have 12 stitches. You're going to do one half double crochet in each of those 12 stitches. And that's number one. That's my 12. So that's what it should look like so far. So I chose the half double because it gives this different sort of a look to it. And I thought it was super cool for a Christmas tree. <clears throat> I'm going to lose my voice. So your next round is going to be two half doubles and then your increase. So that's number one with the marker. Another half double in that stitch is number two. Then the next stitch gets the increase of two half doubles in the same space. And repeat. So one, one, two. All the way around. So you should have 16 stitches and I want you to put one half double crochet in each of those 16 stitches. So that's my 16. <clears throat> so your next round is going to be three half double crochets and an increase. So that's number one. Two. And three half double crochets and then your increase. Two half doubles in the same space. So your next round is going to be four half doubles and an increase. And this will take you up to 23 stitches. And then you can put one half double crochet in each of those 23 stitches. So that's my four half doubles. And then my increase. So this is where it gets a little bit different. I'm going to change it up a bit here. So your next round is going to be five half double crochets and an increase. So that's number one. Oops. Chasing my ball around. That's number one. Two. 
So that's five. And then I'm going to increase two in the same space. So oh, this is what it should look like by now. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do two increases in a row and then a regular one for this next few rows. So your first round is going to be seven, obviously. Half double crochets and an increase. Your next round after that will be eight half doubles and an increase and then a regular half one half double in each stitch. So I put all this on the screen. That's number one. A seven and then two in this stitch. So this is what it should look like by now. So our next round is going to be nine half double crochets. And then the round after that will be just one half double. Should bring you to 43 stitches. That's nine half doubles, and then two half doubles in the next stitch, and a repeat. So, your next round is going to be ten half double crochets and an increase. And then you're going to do one half double crochet in each stitch. You should have 47 stitches. That's number one. That's my 10. And then two half double crochets in this stitch. And repeat. Alrighty, so we're getting there. And because we're doing it and we're grooming, obviously, there's no seam. So that's the best part. So your next round is going to be 11 half double crochets and an increase. It takes you up to 51 stitches and then you're going to put one half double crochet in each of those 51 stitches. Uh, number one. That's my 11 half doubles and then my increase of two half doubles in the same stitch and repeat. So our final increase row is going to be 12 half doubles that takes you to 55 stitches. This is going to be our last increase. And then a row of one half doubles in each of those 55 stitches. And then we're going to start decreasing for the bottom. So we're just about there. That's number one.
of 12 half doubles and then the next stitch will get two half doubles for the increase and repeat So our, we're going to start decreasing and we're going to start with a five half double crochet decrease. So that's number one. That's my five half double crochets and then my de decrease is going to be to yarn over, go into the stitch like you're doing half double, pull through, come through two and stop. Yarn over, go into the second stitch, pull through, come through two, and then come through three. So that's how you're going to do the decrease there. And repeat. Five half doubles. And then you repeat. So yarn over, go into the first stitch, pull through, pull through two and stop. Yarn over, go through the second stitch, pull through, pull through two, and then pull through three. And repeat. Five half doubles. Yarn over, Go through the second, the first stitch, pull through, pull through two and stop, yarn over, go through the second stitch, pull through, pull through two, then pull through three. So that's how you do your decrease. Five half doubles, So your next round is going to be three half double crochets and a decrease. Sticking with our odd numbers. That's number one. That's three half doubles and then your decrease. So yarn over, go into your first stitch, pull through, pull through two and stop. Yarn over, go into your second stitch, pull through two, and then finish it. Now I just changed what was in your head on repeat, didn't I? <laughs> Three half doubles and a decrease. So at this point, <clears throat> it's looking pretty funny. Um, at this point, you're, you should have 30 stitches. So for the next two rows, you're just going to put one half double crochet in each of those 30 stitches. Like I said, we're trying to keep this as flat on the bottom as possible. So right now it should look like a spade, you know, like on a card. Uh, anyway, sometimes my jokes just aren't funny. So I'm trying to keep it, like I said, as flat as I can for the bottom. So um, we're going to, so you should have 30 stitches. We are going to decrease 15 times. So we're going to decrease 
half of those stitches and then we're just going to sew together the rest of it. Um, at this point though I think we can start to stuff it before we do that. So be able to get our hand all the way up there. Now I know that it probably would be just really really easy to just jam this in but you want to make sure you get the very very tippy top and you want to make sure you have no clumping so you kind of have to pull your polyfill apart and just make sure you really pack it in that in that very tippy top you don't want to overstuff it you don't want to see any of the white through here I know it's hard to see what I'm doing but I'm just trying to push my polyfill out to the sides and then stuff the middle. But it's very hard to do. It's not the easiest thing to stuff without getting clumpies. That's why I like to just thin my stuff out. Makes it easier to deal with. I'm gonna pack it all down anyway, but to me it's easier. All right. I'm probably going to squeeze in some more after I start closing it up a little bit. Because if I can still get a finger in there, I will put more. Mine's not overstuffed. I can't see the white through it. Oh, well, maybe in a couple spots. But, no big deal. So, we're going to decrease 15 times, so... So you're going to yarn over, just like the decreases we've been doing, yarn over, go into the first stitch, pull through. Now don't pull these decreases tight. Come through two, yarn over, go into the next stitch, come through two, come through three. You don't need your stitch marker anymore. And then you're going to go right into an, the next decrease. So yarn over, go into the next stitch. Pull through two and stop. Yarn over next stitch. Pull through two. Pull through three. So we just did two, so you've got to do 13 more. So that is my 15. Um, I really want this flat so I don't think I'm going to put any more in because when we close it up I want to be able to push what I have down so that it sits flat. So um, we can just fasten off at this point. So. If you need more, now's the time to shove some more in there. Uh, so that's my last decrease. So I'm just going to go into the next stitch and I'm going to do a slip stitch and fasten off. Now you just need enough to sew this shut and then to weave in a bit. So it's going to be a titch hard to show you, but hopefully the camera can pick it up. So under just one piece of yarn, I'm going to go in and I'm going to go out the next stitch. So I'm going in this stitch and then out that stitch. You don't have to pull tight or anything. You don't even have to pull all the way if you don't want. I'm going to go in and then out the next stitch. So I'm going to do that all the way around, in and out, in and out, and just under that one piece of yarn, in and out, I have two more left, that's where I started, in and out, so 
after this, all you're going to do is pull. And it's just going to close up just like that. So pull as tight as you can, and then you're going to come across. We're just going to make a small little knot. So come across and through that area. Now this little loop you got, you're going to go through the loop. So that's going to make a knot, and then you're going to pull up and down a couple times. That tightened that knot right up. I got a whole pile of polyfill on the bottom of this, and it's driving me crazy a little bit some of it gone so we just made a wee tiny knot there and if you wanted to you can make another another tiny knot but I'm just gonna weave so I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna start to weave so if you got any high spots you can kind of pull them down there because like I said you want that to be flat so I'm actually gonna push on the bottom so that'll make my bottom kind of look like this because I just pushed some of the stuffing up but it's going to be sitting nobody's going to see the bottom so it doesn't matter so I'm just going to shove some more stuffing up into the tree so the bottom's a little wonky like that it's perfectly fine at least you know it's going to be able to sit all by itself and even me shaking the table it doesn't fall over so so that's what we want. We want it to be nice and sturdy. So it doesn't really matter what the bottom looks like. As long as it's not around because you've overstuffed it. Actually here this last bit you probably could have done singles if you wanted this nice and tight because I mean it is kind of spacey. Probably could have done a single crochet but like I said it doesn't matter what the bottom looks like. So when you weave, um, you come out in a spot, go back in as close as you can to the same spot to, the, to your lead. So it just looks like um, a stitch when you pull on it. Green on green, this might not be easy to see. So it just looks like a stitch when you pull on it. But if you pull too tight, you get a little bit of a divot. You'll just have to pull back out pair of scissors or something. So go ahead and do your weave. It's not that super duper imperative because no one's going to be tugging on the bottom and we made the knot. So I'm just going to go a couple of times. No big deal. Cut that off. You'd probably go more if it was like an arm or a leg of something. Or So there we go. We got our Christmas tree done. So, uh, as far as the decorations go, um, I used a 4 millimeter hook and I created stitches and then I just kind of went on a diagonal pattern. This naturally goes in a spiral and that's what this is doing, but I did find that I had to kind of still guide my own way around but if you don't want to do what I'm gonna do actually we'll do we'll do it differently but there's there's what I did for this tree is is on the diagonal and then this tree I kind of followed the spiral a little bit but then I added a scallop all along so you can do oh some of my got stuck in my glue so you can do that too it's an idea um, we're going to do that for the little tree. Um, for this one, maybe we'll just, we'll put like, like this and then the bows. So let's try and do it that way. So that is next. Alrighty. So I've got some of this stuff. I know it's going to be hard to see this is sparkles in it and then I've got some red sparkly so the, these sparkly yarns are from the Red Heart um, comfort collection metallic there's comfort and then there's comfort metallic and there's also a Red Heart with love metallic 
and they all have the glitteries. And there's probably plenty more, but that's where I get it from. And I buy it on Amazon. Cannot get it at Michael's. Um, you can also buy it online, uh, Walmart online. But during this pandemic, everything's running out. So it's been very, very, very hard to get yarn. So I am just going to make a slip knot. However you make one. And then figure out where you want to go. So I think I'm going to do this sweeping motion. Like, you, like you'd see on a regular tree. Uh, maybe I'll start at... Yeah, no, I'll start at the bottom. So, I don't know. I'm just going to start wherever. I haven't done this type of motion before. So, so just go in and grab a post. That's a post. So that's a post, that's a post, and that's a post. So that's what you're going to be going into. Yarn over, and then just create a stitch. Get my tail out of the way. Create a stitch. So don't worry about um, whether you're going to put another stitch in here or not, because we're we're going to be going up. We're not going to be coming back here to slip stitch or anything, so it doesn't really matter. So this will just have to be the back of your tree. So let's um we're not gonna be able to follow the post because um well I guess you can follow them for a bit because they do spiral. So I guess I wanna go up to a point. So you're just gonna have to stick your hook in anywhere. You can get it in, whether it's around a post or in between a post or however you want to do it. So if I go up, I don't know how far up to go. Because i got to come back down, right? And then go up. And then i got to come back down. In a swooping motion. Just making this up as I go along, guys. You can do whatever you want. I'm just winging it. So I imagine I would have to still come back down to at least here to make it even before I go back up. Now another way you could do this is, is to make chains and then just sew it in place, but that's probably easier, so... I'm just about down to the space I need. Which again, it doesn't matter because how many trees are uniformed, right? So now I gotta start going back up. Oh, so maybe I will come back around and slip stitch. And then I'll just start in a different spot. Yeah, I never thought of that because with a spiral I never did. So I guess I shouldn't have said that. So I am just going to slip stitch into that and I am going to fasten off. So this is going to be your back obviously. So you're going to probably be able to put a bow there so it's not as noticeable. But um, I'm going to tie these two together in a very tight double knot. And then I'm going to just pull them down into the tree. So there's very tippy bottom. So anyway, um, I think I'll just go red or white, red, white, red. So of course I'm going to start at the back with my red. 
Uh, I'm just going to make a slip knot just like I did. I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I'm just going to do it higher. So that's my slip knot. Figure out where you want to start. I think I'll come all the way up here. Grab a post. And begin. So set your base for how how much of a dip you want to do in your in your garland. That's all we're making really is garland. So you want to make sure I come down about the same spot. Just about. So I'm not that far away from the white from before. And I'm going to go back up. So I know it's hard to see. This is my tree. Um, the back is a hot mess but that's okay I know that's my back so um I tried to do it as not messy but as uh, uh, how do I even say this not uniformed because when you put garland on a Christmas tree um, it's never just perfect do you know what I mean so we are going to make some bows and then I think our bows can either go here or like at every drop point or every high point. So that's the plan next. So um, I did all my bows to make them really, really small. I used a 3.5, which I think is an E. Uh, I will put it right up on the screen up here somewhere. But I'm pretty sure it's an E hook. So you could probably just use scrap yarn. Um, I'm just going to do all different colors. But um, I will I will show you in this sparkly red. Just because it's easier to see than this sparkly white. But I am just going to do um, all different colors. Because um, I did a tree that's red and white. And then this tree is kind of multicolors with the little things and then this tree is just different from all the rest because I'm just going to group them all together they're all going to sit on a table so I want them to be all different so I think for this tree I did the red and white garland but I think I'm going to do the um I'll do the different colors for the for the glitter glue and I'll do the different colors for the bows so that'll be kind of different so bow is really small and it's really quick so I'm gonna show you one and then let you go ahead and um, and do the other ones yourself so uh, we're going to make a slip knot and we are going to chain five now if you want your bows bigger you then just do more chains keep in mind I'm using a four weight worsted with a 3.5 hook which is about two sizes and a half down from what it should be um, so it's gonna be nice and tight small little bow you're gonna crochet uh, four single crochets back up to the beginning and then you're gonna chain one and turn And we're going to do this for six rows. So that's number one. It goes pretty fast because there's only four stitches. So, um, it looks a little raw. It looks a little not very neat um, I didn't do this with my last bows because they're so small but if you wanted to it's an option you don't need to do 
I chained one there and I'm gonna create I'm gonna I'm gonna single crochet around the entire project but up here and down here I have no stitches so I'm just gonna stick my hook in wherever I can and I'm just gonna create stitches so now your bow is gonna be one row bigger obviously all the way around but it's also gonna clean up the edges so it's not gonna be such raw edges and then your slip stitch here your slip knot here you can just tuck in as you go oh I'm stuck this glittery stuff is nice but you get stuck on everything so corners obviously you're gonna get two stitches in there um, I like raw edges on mine so I'm not gonna do this for mine but I'm just showing you what it's gonna look like so two in the corner and it's gonna seem like it's gonna round that out but you're not gonna notice once we squish it all down and and sew it together so I'm weaving in my tail from my slip knot then you won't have to take care of that later and then you've got stitches obviously up here and that's four so I'm back around I'm just gonna slip stitch to this I'm gonna fasten off so the tail you need is gonna be a sewing tail a wrapping tail so I'll pull that through now if you weaved in your tail from your slip knot you can just cut that off and get that right out of the way We're going to use this for the center of the bow to squish it down. So I have four stitches across. I need to weave down two of them, so halfway, to pull that through. So I need that right in the middle. I'm now going to squish this down. You can fix it all later. And you're just going to wrap. You can wrap as much as you want to make your middle as big or as small as you want to. But once you're done wrapping, I probably got too much yarn or too much of a tail. So once you're done, this is the back of your project. That's the front. You're just going to have to make sure you're at the back. So now take your needle and go underneath what you just wrapped pull through till you have this small little loop you're going to go through the loop because you're going to make a knot and just make sure you're keeping it at the back so pull up and down a couple of times that tightens that knot right up like it's not going to come undone and then the rest is to sew to the tree so you're done um, you're just going to sew the rest of the tree so that is your little bow and like I said, you don't need to put, you don't need to do the whole outside of it. And you can just have the raw edges if you want. So go ahead and make as many bows as you need. And then I'll meet you back here and we'll sew them onto the tree. So I have a bunch of bows that I did. This is in the glittery pink. So like I said, I didn't go around the uh, outside with extra stitches. I just left my mine raw. So they're not as big as, so that's a raw edge one. And then that's one where we went around the outside. So this one does look better, but this one's gonna look more uniformed, I think, size wise on the tree. But anyway, that's worsted. I used my scraps to make this so um, now this pink sparkly is worsted too but I, I didn't do the extra step and then I've got some that are just regular so I have some bows that are just going to be smaller than than other bows but I just used my scrap to make all these so I've got some pieces sticking up from my tails I didn't get cut off but um, I can do that when I when I go around 
So um, I'm going to start sewing mine on. Start with a blue one. Start with one that's easy to see. So like I said, I think I'm just going to um, sew on. I'm going to sew mine on on the low points instead of the high points. So of course we're not going to do the bottom because it's too low. And you don't have to hit every low point. But uh, anyway, so I'm just going to go in into the tree and I'm going to just kind of grab a post, a couple of posts. I'm going to come out into the bow. You may know a better way of sewing. I'm, I suck at sewing, so you don't want to completely listen to me. I'm going to go back down close enough to the tail where it's just going to look, look like a stitch. And I'm going to come back out. And then I'm going to go up into this guy. So you really don't have to tack it down a lot. And then I'm going to go into the tree again. I'm going to tie a knot. Uh, or a double knot, however you prefer. But don't make it tight. You want a knot, but this knot, the whole theory is it's going to get stuck in the fibers of the polyfill or cotton, whatever you've used, and someone's not going to be able to pluck my bow right off the tree. So I'm going to cut it back. I have not tightened the knot, and I have left a little bit of a nubby because if I cut it too short, then the knot's going to wiggle itself loose. We don't want to pull this into the tree. We want to push it right down into that fiber, polyfill fiber. So, bow number one. So, uh, let's go ahead and just sew our bows on wherever you're going to sew your bows on. And I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, so I've got all my bows on. Um, this is the back, so I didn't really go that crazy with the bows. But that's my front. I used the biggest, the big one that I did with you guys where I went around the outside and just put that on the very top for almost like a star, I guess. So some lows and then some high points up here. Anyway, um, I've got all my glitter glue, all the different colors that there are. I'll get this tree out of the way for now. So there's there's plenty of different other different colors. These these are two different color blues. But they're so close together, and then I got this other different color blue. It actually, has more sparkles in it. Yellow, pink, silver, and then there's not much of that left, I don't think. So, I got all my different colors, and I am just going to double. So, um, when I did my other one, I, I did it all, and then I just let it sit and dry for a whole entire day and night. So, 24 hours. So, I knew it was completely... Now these you don't have to shake. I'm just gonna wipe off this little drip I got going on here. Onto my scrap yarn. So you don't need to shake these. You can just start dabbing. And you can make them as big as you want or as small as you want. And you just find a spot. dab her down. So I'm gonna go around with one color and and then I'll switch and make this bigger. So 
So it's just like Christmas balls. You don't want your colors too close together. I probably shouldn't have put that one there, but it is done. So I'm done with that color. I'm going to go with the purple. My favorite color is purple. Now I'm not shaking this because I have to shake it. It's already mixed. It's mixed pretty well. Um, it's because I want to get it all the way down to the bottom. Some of these are emptying out. So because I like this purple, I'm going to do a great big dollop of purple balls. I know this isn't crocheting, but I wasn't going to crochet a bunch of tiny little balls. don't even know if I have the patience for that. As you know, if you followed my channel long enough, I don't do small things very well. It hurts my hands. I have bad hands, so I stick to the larger projects. You know, I make big dolls. I, I don't make those tiny little dolls that are, I mean, really, what do you do with them? can't snuggle them. So, uh, you can stop putting your balls on anytime you want. I'm still going because I like a lot of balls on my tree. I'm just not going as much with the colors. So, there we have it. I got a couple of drips going on. But, a couple of drips right there glue all over my hands. Anyway, you get the point. I'm going to leave the tree here to dry. Hi guys, so part two-ish kind of of this little, uh, the little Christmas tree, a little tiny one. So I'm going to be doing it in this sparkly green. You can see the sparkles. And then around this garland, this scalloped garland, I'm going to be doing it in the, in the glittery pink. So let's get started. We um, build from the top down, just like I did with my big one. If you've watched my big one, which is technically a part one, um, even though it's not even the same project. <laughs> uh, so anyway, we're going to start with a magic ring. And you're going to put six half double crochets. Six. You're going to need a stitch marker because we're going to make this amigurumi style. Which means no slip stitching, no chaining. So you're going to go into your next stitch and you're going to put a half double crochet. With your stitch marker. And this round is going to be one double crochet or one half double crochet and an increase. So that's your one half double crochet. So into your next stitch. You're going to do the increase of two half doubles in the same space and repeat. So you should have a total of nine stitches. You can turn this right side in now. Pull your middle closed a little bit, so that's going to be the top of your tree. Your next round is going to be two half doubles and an increase. So stitch number one, one half double plus your marker. 
the next stitch gets one half double. So that's two half doubles and then your increase of two half doubles in the same space. So your next round is just going to be one half double crochet in each of these 12 stitches. So your next round is going to be three half doubles and an increase. That's number one. Three half doubles. And then your next stitch gets the increase of two half doubles in that same space. Your next round is going to be four half doubles and an increase. Number one. Always, always, always get your stitch marker. That's two. That's four half doubles. And then the next stitch gets two half doubles in the same space for your increase. So if you're ending off at your marker at the end of your sequence, then you know you're doing everything right. But then you've got these one half double crochet in each stitch rows where you can make sure you've got the same count that you should have. You should have 18 stitches. So this round is just going to be one half double crochet in each stitch around for 18 stitches. And this is also where you can fix it. So if you're short a stitch, you can add a stitch. And if you have too many, you can take one away. So. So at 18, I'm still on track. So your next row is going to be five half double crochets. And that should bring you up to 21 stitches. And then the next round is going to be one half double on each of those 21 stitches. That's five half doubles. And then your increase of two half doubles in the same space. So your next round is going to be six half double crochets and an increase. And that'll take you to 24 stitches. And then your next row after that will be one half double in each of those 24 stitches. That's number one. That's six half doubles. So your next stitch will get the increase of two half doubles in the same space. So 
So your next round is seven half double crochets and an increase. And that takes you to 27 stitches. And then you're going to put one half double crochet in each of those 27 stitches. That's seven half doubles. So your next stitch gets two half doubles for the increase. And repeat. So the next three rows are going to be a little bit different. Um, this next one is going to be eight double, half double crochets and an increase. Your next round is going to be nine half doubles. So we're not doing that one in between. And we're going to do that all the way to 11 half double crochets. So I'm going to put that on the screen. So this is what you just have. Uh, we're going to start um, decreasing soon, but this next row, so this last one, you should have been your 11 half double crochet and an increase. So your next round, you should have 39 stitches. Your next round is going to be one single crochet, or sorry, one um, half double crochet uh, in each of the uh, 39 stitches. I just forgot what I had said. <laughs> 39 stitches. So one half double crochet in each stitch. And then we're going to start our decreases. So your next round, we're going to start decreasing. And we're going to do a six single crochet decrease. Uh, six half double crochet decrease. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I meant. That's number one. That's six half double crochets, and then your decrease is going to be to yarn over, go into your first stitch, and pull through. You're going to pull through two loops and stop. You're going to yarn over, you're going to go into your next stitch, you're going to pull through, you're going to pull through two, and then you're going to pull through all three. So that's your decrease. And repeat. Six half double crochets, and then your decrease. So yarn over. Go into your first stitch, pull through, yarn over and come through two, and stop, yarn over, go into your second stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through all three, and repeat. So your next round is going to be four half double crochets and a decrease. That's number one with your marker. That's four half double crochets and then your decrease. And repeat. So your next round is going to be three half double crochets and a decrease. And then after this we can uh, start to stuff it. 
so that's number one. Three half doubles and then your decrease. And repeat. So before we do the last little bit, we should probably put some stuffing in here. So I like to push it all out to the side and then stick it up the middle, the nice hole that I dig. I seem to get a way better stuff when I do it like that. Now try not to overstuff it because you don't want to see the white through. So I might stick some more in there after. So we're just going to do a single crochet decrease. So you're just going to go into the stitch, grab some yarn, go into the next stitch, grab some yarn, and then go through all three of those stitches. So we're just doing a single crochet decrease. You're going to need enough to sew the bottom shut and to weave, but that's about it. And again, I probably have too much, but it's always better to have too much than not enough. So this needs to be flat because your tree needs to sit up on its own. So don't overstuff, but I think I can still stand and get some more in there, a little bit more in there. So that's what it looks like when you just kind of keep going around and around and around and around until you have enough, you know, to just sew shut and pull shut without it looking horrible. So I'm just kind of shoving up the middle and maybe a little bit out. I don't want to overstuff the bottom because it really just needs to sit on its own. So I'm going to push up. I think that's good. I think it's still pretty flat and still I could probably still have plenty of room in here to push up. So if you push on this and it bounces back then you have enough stuffing. If you push on it and it doesn't bounce back you need more stuffing. But as long as you can't see through then you're fine. So we can get the bottom sewn up. Now this one's going to look bigger than the one that I initially showed you because this is worsted yarn and the one I showed you at the beginning of the video is not worsted yarn. So I'll show you the size difference between worsted and not worsted in a second. So you're going to come through, you're going to pick up one piece of yarn only in the first stitch. You're going to come out the second stitch under just one piece of yarn. You don't have to pull all the way. You can leave a little loopy. I like to leave a little loop at the beginning. So again, the next two, you're going to go in the first one and out the second one. And the first one, out the second one. Two more stitches left, in and out. So once you've got all that, you're just going to pull. So it's just going to close that hole right up, just like that. So once your hole is closed up, come across to the other side.
go through the loop because we want to make a knot. So when you pull, pull up and back like this, tightens that knot right down. And then you can go in and you can weave. So I'm just going to push up on that a bit, make sure it's going to stand on its own, which it does. So in your weaving, go in where you came out, go in as close as you can to your lead. That way it just looks like a stitch and it doesn't look like you were actually weaving. You don't have to do much weaving. You just don't think anyone's going to pull apart your bottom. So just a couple of times. So you may have to adjust it. I've got a couple of bumpy spots, but So this is my worsted one and this is my not worsted one. That's the size difference between worsted yarn and just regular four weight. These are both four weights. That's just this one's worsted and this one's not. So that's the size difference that you get. So if I ever do anything and I'm only using a four weight and you want it to be bigger, all you have to do is just use a worsted, worsted weight and maybe a bigger needle if you really want it that much bigger. So, um, I've changed to a four millimeter to put, to put this stuff on. Um, you can do it in a spiral like I did, or you can just, well just, I mean, I guess you have to kind of do it in a spiral to get it around the tree. Yeah, so we're going to do it in a spiral. So all you need to do is make a slip knot. Make sure this tail is decently long so that we can tuck it in and cut it off. So starting at what's going to end, eventually be the back. And wherever you want to start, you want to pick up a post. So the first thing we have to do is create stitches. So we're going to put a single crochet around that post. And then you're just going to create stitches moving in an upwards direction. It doesn't matter how big of a stitch you do either. But moving in an up upward spiral sort of direction or whatever you want to do. So because we built this in a spiral amigurumi, there is a natural spiral to this pattern as it is. So if you just followed along the posts, it would spiral up anyway. It would just spiral up really shallow. Um, so right now I'm just following post for post. I kind of already went up a little bit over here. So when I come back around, I'm going to be way higher than normal if I just followed the natural spiral. But keep in mind, we're putting scallops on this too. So plus all the little glitter balls. And you can put bows on this one if you want. The big one we put bows on. This one I decided to just decorate it up with a scalloped um, garland. So I'm going to end at the back where I started at the back just so it doesn't look so silly. Actually I'm not ending because I still gotta build the scallops but I'm ending like 
the, the, the row. <laughs> anyway, so I want you to chain two. So we're going to go back this way. So our scallops, our repeat is going to consist of uh, go into your next stitch. So not this one. That's kind of going to be used by our chain two. I want you to go into the next stitch. And I want you to do three double crochets. Or you can do half doubles. If it depends on how big you want them. I'm going to do doubles. So three double crochets in the same space. It's hard to hold on to, I know. You're going to skip one, and into the next stitch, you're going to put one single crochet. So that's going to be our scallops. And your repeat starts in the very next stitch of three double crochets in the same space. It's very awkward, but it goes very fast because you get to skip that one space. So it does go pretty fast. It's even more awkward to do it with the camera between your legs. So three double crochets. Skip one. And into the next stitch you're just going to do a single crochet. So I want you to pull tight when you do your single because you're going to have to book this which means you're going to have to you're going to have to when you're done you're going to have to wet it or you can use spray starch. So that it doesn't keep rolling up so that it's so you have to just wet it pull it down and let it dry in that position because that's how what how it's supposed to be so so that's going to be your repeat all the way around three double crochets skip one one single crochet So I'm right back basically where I, where I started. Uh, I just did my one single crochet. So that's my three double crochets. So I would skip one and then I have this last stitch. And instead of the one single crochet, I'm just going to do a slip stitch and I'm going to fasten off. So you just need um, a tail about as long as this, preferably as long as your straggler. Whoops. So I'm just going to pull that tight. So all I'm going to do with these two is I'm going to tie a very tight double knot. I'm going to make these even because I'm going to thread them into my needle. And I'm going to go in just to the top of this down into the tree. And I'm just going to pull through. And I'm going to pull tight. So at this point you can do another knot. Or you can just cut it off. But I'm going to do another knot with both both pieces. Um, I'm not going to make it super, super tight. And I'm not going to cut it off all the way down near the knot. I'm going to leave a little nubby. And I'm going to poke it down into the stuffing. So... If anybody tugs on this, that should get lodged into the stuffing and then... Sorry, I'm just cutting off pieces of my metallic that got yanked and it was sticking up. So, when you book this, which means getting it wet and then putting it into shape, you just got to pull it all down. But we'll worry about that. 
You can worry about this now and then finish the video later. Or you can... So if you were to do this and you did it in the color white with the scallops, it could potentially look like snow. It's just a thought. So, um, you can book this now, you can book it later, you can starch it, whatever. Um, but I would, I would do that before I do the, the glue balls if you're going to wet it. Because you're going to have to spray and then bring your hands down. So, let's get that done first and we'll let it dry overnight and then I'll see you back here. I know that's odd for a video, but for me, it's just going to be a quick cut in the video, but I don't think you really need me to show you how to put on glue balls. So, um, that's basically, I guess, where I'm going to leave you with the video. So, don't forget, you're going to have to book this or spray starch it. Bring it all down. And then you can take your Elmer's glue, if that's what you're going to do. You don't have to do that, but you take your Elmer's glue. And I've got all these colors that I did in my other video. So I've got all these colors. And I'm going to put my, my glue balls on. And I'm probably going to do bigger balls than I did with these. These are glue balls. I know it's hard to tell. There's one that dripped. But they dry really hard. So... Um, mine have been cured now for about a week with this one, so I'm, I'm going to do my booking now because they've had time to cure, so you can do either way. So, that'll be your back, obviously, with the two ends. But thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you in the next video.